Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2011 Unit 1 Paper 2, and it's a question 2 that was centered on the topic of solubility product. The first part of the question asks us to list one, the factor which affects the solubility product constant, the KSP. The KSP is affected by temperature, right? And we know that to be true for most of our um, equilibrium constants, they're gonna be affected by temperature. And that's also the case for the solubility product constant, okay? Then we're asked to list one factor, except that in part one above, which influence the solubility of a salt. So what's gonna affect the solubility itself of a salt? So the presence of ions in the solution that are in common with those in the salt will affect the solubility, okay? And that leads us to our next question in question 2B, where it asks us now to describe the common ion effect as it relates to the solubility of the salt. So here's what the common ion effect is. The common ion effect is the reduction in solubility of a salt that is observed when a solution of a compound, which has an ion in common with the dissolved salt is added to it, okay? And I'll link a video here where we worked a question which tested you know, this very same phenomenon. It's a reduction in solubility known as the common ion effect. And the question that we did was about we if we had a sodium carbonate solution, right? And we added calcium carbonate into that, right? These ions are present in common. They're present both in the salt that we're trying to dissolve and it would have been present in the solution. And in fact, it was a 0.1 molar solution, right? And so the, due to the fact that now you have the carbonate from here and the carbonate from here, it will result in a, in a net reduction in the solubility of calcium carbonate, okay? And so that's what we call the common ion effect, all right? And that's how it works. Now, moving on to two part C. Two part C says, one type of kidney stones is formed by the precipitation of calcium phosphate, which has a KSP of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 32 at 25 degrees Celsius. A patient submitted a urine sample which contain concentrations of 1.2 times 10 to the negative four mole per dm cube of calcium ions and 1.1 times 10 to the negative eight mole per dm cube of phosphate ions. Now for part one, we have to write a balanced equation for the formation of calcium and phosphate ions from calcium phosphate. So here's our balanced equation. We're gonna start with our calcium phosphate in the solid phase. And then equilibrium is gonna be set up where we have three moles of calcium two plus ions in their aqueous phase and two moles of phosphate ions in the aqueous phase. And so that's our balance equation there. And so next we're being asked to write the expression for the solubility product constant. So that's KSP for calcium phosphate. So here's our KSP expression. We're going to have right, or products, so the ions. So we're gonna have the Ca2 plus, the concentration of that cubed, since there is a three there for the balancing for that. So we do calcium ions raised to the power of three, the concentration of that, times the concentration of phosphate ions squared, because there's a two in front of the phosphates, okay? And so that's our KSP expression there for calcium phosphate. So now moving right along, we're being asked to calculate the ionic product of calcium phosphate in the patient's urine, right? So remember, they told us, they gave us the concentrations of each ions, right? The phosphate ions, so we're given the concentration of what the phosphate ions are in the patient's urine, and we're given the concentration of what the the calcium ions are, sorry, and what the phosphate ions are in the patient's urine. And so if we're supposed to find the ionic product then, based on what the KSP expression is, we can use that relationship in terms of ion concentrations as our starting point. 
And so we will know that this is the formula then that we have to use to find the ionic product. And so using this formula, we would then plug in the concentration of the calcium ions, which is this number. We plug that here, cube it, right? And then for the phosphate, we're going to take this number, plug it here, and then square it. And that, when you multiply that through, we get a value of an ionic product of 2.1 times 10 to the negative 28 mole to the fifth dm to the minus 15. Right, I want you to just take a moment to take a note of that unit as well, right? Because we have a cubed here, one of the concentrations are cubed and another one is squared, we're gonna have some really interesting units and it turns out that these are the units for that ionic product, okay? All right, so now we've gotten the ionic product of calcium phosphate in the parents in the patient's urine. And now we're gonna move on to this final question now, uh, which is asking us, state why kidney stones are likely to form in the patient's urine. Now let's go back to the original statement up here, right? It says that one type of kidney stone is formed by the precipitation of calcium phosphate, right? And so the only condition under which um, kidney stones are likely to form in the patient's urine is if we have some kind of a precipitation taking place, right? And this is the condition under which precipitation takes place. Precipitation is gonna take place if the ionic product is greater than the KSP. So that means that your ionic product, if your ionic product exceeded your KSP, which tells you the saturation point, if you exceed the saturation point for that solution, you're going to get precipitation, okay? And it turns out that our ionic product that we got on the previous um, question, when we did our calculation, we got this, right? And what we realize is that that is, in fact, greater than the KSP, which is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 32, right? And so we know that precipitation occurs and that precipitation is in fact the presence of those kidney stones, okay? So precipitation occurs on the basis of how much, con what a concentration of those ions in the patient's urine, okay? All right, so let's just write that precipitation occurs. And that's, that's how the kidney stones are formed. Okay? All right. So let's move on to part D. Right? Part D says, outline an experimental procedure for the determination of the solubility product constant of barium hydroxide, BaOH2. Okay? And again, I'm going to link the video where we did this for another hydroxide as well, another group 2 hydroxide. So I'll just link that here while we outline our experimental procedure here. Now, there are five key steps to determine any solubility product constant. There are five key steps. So here they are. We're going to make a saturated solution of barium, sol barium hydroxide by adding enough of the solid to a known volume of water. Right? Then we're going to shake that mixture and leave it for 24 hours to allow it to reach equilibrium. After we have reached equilibrium, we're going to filter off any solid barium hydroxide. Right? Then we're going to take little samples from our equilibrium mixture and we're going to titrate those samples with hydrochloric acid of known concentration. So effectively, what are we doing? We're doing a, a acid-based titration to figure out the concentration of barium hydroxide. Once we've been able to calculate the concentration of barium hydroxide from that titration, then we automatically know the concentration of the Ba2 plus ions and the concentration of the hydroxide ions in that saturated solution at 25 degrees C. It's a very important part. We have to be controlling our temperature, right? So we're leaving this for 24 hours at room temperature, right? 25 degrees C. So when we find that KSP, then we can find that KSP by plugging in those concentrations that we would have gotten from the titration. And then that will give us our KSP value at room temperature. Okay? 
And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. Definitely consider subscribing to the channel. And if you look here, right, on your left, you will see the next video up. If you look on your right, you will see the module two playlist where there are tons of other content for you to indulge in and get yourself ready for this exam, okay? Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.